Hi, I'm Tony Shannon, and welcome to my version of the Kinetic Sculpture Race. For those of you who know all about the race, who want to save time, you can fast forward now until you see Hobart appear on the screen. For the rest of you, let me run down the basics of the race. The Kinetic Sculpture Race is a race of human-powered vehicles, which are also art. These vehicles are all-terrain vehicles. By this I mean they not only travel on asphalt, but also sand, mud, and water. Yes, they're amphibious, and you'll see them cross Humboldt Bay. The Kinetic Sculpture Race is a three-day race which starts in Arcata, California, goes through Eureka, California, and finally finishes in Ferndale, California. It's a little over 38 miles and a lot of hard work for the pilots. But before the hard work begins, there's an election of a rutabaga queen who will preside over the race. Here to tell you about the election is Hobart Brown, the glorious founder of the World Championship Kinetic Sculpture Race. We have, right before the race, we have a big rutabaga queen party. And it, what it is, it's a, it's a situation where we allow, or we, we set up a stage for other types of people to come in. And uh, like any other contest, like a beauty contest or anything else, the sculpture race has broken so many barriers, you know, in the unnatural world that it's only natural that we would have a contest. And, and our rutabaga queen, which any major event has to have some form of royalty or figurehead, so we decided to have, in fact, we didn't even plan it, it just evolved into the rutabaga queen contest. And of course the rules were that you send a, a 8 by 10 glossy of yourself or a good drawing or we say it isn't necessary that you're beautiful. In fact, that could be held against you. The real thing is to have sturdy legs and to be able to go, long, go a long ways and be able to have a lot of fun in a crowd without much direction. In other words, be a good ruler. Hey guys, you, uh, you're the campaign managers here for Louise? Yeah. <laughs> She's funny. She's, she's, she's great. She's yeah. great. She's. Why am I supposed to vote for her? Because she's. She's funny. She's. She's sexy. sexy. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she looks good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Good taste. She's hot. <laughs> You're Louise. Queen? I'm gonna be the next rutabaga queen, you betcha. I got some rutabagas right here for you. You want one? I, I, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, we'll do it without today. Okay, we'll pay. <laughs> what, what are the uh, honors of being rutabaga queen? It's for the glory. One, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, all the contestants right in front. Four, okay. four, for your uh, particular criteria. Louise, come on over here. Come on over there. Louise, you, you, don't, you don't have a stuffed animal with you. Whoops, no, no, it's stuffing. I oh, didn't no, no, say no, stuffing. No, no. Ah. She's got a rutabaga. She's got a rutabaga it's in her bra. It's a well stuffed rutabaga. A rutabaga in her bra. How's that, God? Is that good enough? <laughs> Did you bring a, your favorite stuffed animal with us tonight? Yes. Where is it at? A hair. Right there. Oh. Oh, she's going to make her, her favorite stuffed animal. Now, this is talent, talent, talent. <laughs> Are you watching? You've got to watch, because if you're not watching, it won't be able to come out right. This looks like safe masochistic sex. This is clean family fun. Yeah. No, you don't. Look at that. Poodle. It's a poodle with chubby cheeks. Okay.
1991 Kinetic Sculpture Race, Rutabaga Queen for 1991 is Louise! 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 I mean, you know, our fastest speed, what, maybe get 15 and one of the most sophisticated of our machinery. But mo the average speed in this race is about three or four miles an hour. So to have a Le Mans start just added to the romance of it. And also, that's how a lot of races start. You know, that's the Le Mans race. It's the serious, the big guy race. So, of course, we'd have the Le Mans start. And we'd say, gentlemen, start your gentlemen. <laughs> also, we have the blessing of the feet, which we did last year. This year we missed it, but we'll bring it back again. It was very important to bless the feet. And... Uh, Anyway, so the, the, the Le Mans was just to add romance and character to it. And, and anything that, that can come up that somebody creates or something, we'll add it in this race because we're not so structured. Uh, in fact, the only thing we really protect in this race is the philosophy. Desperately, we would cling to and hang to the philosophy that we should have a good time. I mean, in fact, we have a punishing rule in there. It says if you're not having a good time, you can get a ticket. The racers leave Arcata on the first day. Uh, they go down some, uh, they leave the roaring crowds with all the glory and they're in full color with flags waving and costumes in perfect shape and their wheels are all oiled and everything is just perfect and they race off and of course there's a big crunch as they leave. There's a few of them that stay at the square, which we have an award for, the Dr. Peter Award, which is given for the first one breaking down after the starting line. He wrote the Peter Principle, you know. When, uh, let's see, people re achieve, I don't, can't remember it anyway, <laughs> people reach their level of incompetence. Anyway, so then they race off down country roads and they go out through a rural farm area, which is really great, Arcata Bottoms, and the farmers are sitting in their chairs waving and cheering at people and it's fun and the racers like them and they like each other. And one of our rules are that we be friendly and, and, and uh, outgoing to all the people that are there. So anyway, they're sitting there and we race on. Then at the um, uh, Redwood United, which is a, a a project for people who are handicapped to work. They let us go through their gate. So we go into the sand, we cross over to the Samoa, uh, Samoa Peninsula in the sand area, which is a lot like the, it's blowing drifted sand hills like the Sahara Desert. And so the wheels that work back on the small roads now have to be altered or changed or something with the stuff that's on board so that they can actually float over sand or, or either that or they wind up like a lot do there at the base of the hill stuck in the sand.
it. You got it. You guys have got it. Yay. Good luck. A little bit of warm up. You know, kind of needed to go back to the drawing board, so to speak. It's always on the drawing board. So to speak. <laughs> Pencil in some improvements. Sweetie, over here. Get the lead out. Sharpen Fun things line. up. Isn't he supposed to be saying this? <laughs> Inside. It's almost like destiny. <laughs> I feel like I just destined to be Rutabaga Queen, 1991, and I love every single one of you for voting for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Woo! Then there's about, I guess, about four or five miles of sand, soft sand, uh, hard sand down by the ocean, and it's a, it's a special time in the race too. While you're racing there, that's the, that's the first time you're alone with your machine and your crew, and you've got this beautiful beach and this ocean right next to you, and there's, and you just, you don't see anyone where you're at unless somebody's passing you. You're passing somebody. It's a wonderful feeling out there. Uh, you have a sense of, of uh, really involved in something. Yeah. I don't think it really is. Hi. Give us a smile. Hey. We've got the two.
necessary, but this race has many textures, and one of them is the fact that it has to be able to maneuver in traffic situations, because ultimately, ultimately, we are even having a wonderful time racing and, and meeting neat people and getting unbelievable publicity for the area. Uh, out of all of this, we're also doing a serious little under, a little string of seriousness goes through there, because we're designing stuff that's very efficient. And so if we can decide something that's efficient, design something that's efficient, carry on board equipment enough to spend a night out on the beach, and all the safety equipment, we are really designing something that could be the way of the future, like using our energy. Instead of going home and using your uh, apparatus for exercise, why not use your apparatus for exercise to get you to work in the morning if you live within a two or three miles of where you are? could solve a great problem. And in fact, whether we like it or not, the price of gas could actually make these vehicles very popular. Uh, second day starts early in the morning uh, at the Bayshore Mall, where we, you know, spent the night. Or did, well, the machine spent the night, sculptures. Anyway, so they'll take off about 8 there, and then they'll go down the freeway, which is about 3 or 4 miles, to the town of Fields Landing, which is the last whaling station, or was the last whaling station on the continental U.S., I believe. Anyway, uh, there's a ramp there, and so the, the sculptures turn in and go down towards the ocean. And here's, here again we have several worries, especially on the level of... of being Gloria's founder, uh, we're worried about uh, getting all the sculptures in the water on time, hoping the wind isn't too high, hoping the tide isn't going out, because in the event that the, we have to get them in before the tide turns, and we have a pretty wild tide here, because as the tide goes out, it could very well take you to Japan. So we've got to keep it coming in, so the worst that could happen to them, they'd wind up at College of Redwoods or somewhere way upstream. <laughs> but anyway, so they cross two miles of water then. So this is a very scary a very challenging, a very exciting, a very exhilarating event because right now in a lot of the big machines like the 60 footers and stuff like that have not been water tested for the sheer fact that you can't move them around wherever you want to go whenever you want to go. Anyway, so they'll roll in the water with, with nothing but engineering to make sure they're going to float. They do not know or have a clue as to whether what they did will work. Even if they're good engineered, are they good sound mechanic? Are they sound mechanically? And if they're sound mechanically and good engineered, are the people on board going to respond the way they're supposed to? So there's so many ways to have a few more sculptures eaten <laughs> by this new water entry. So, and also the water is not light, and it, it's not just an average crossing of the bay. We have three deep channels out there. One of them is about 40 foot deep and, deep and takes, uh, uh, it'll take ships from uh, you know, China and all over the world will come in for lumber. So when we're, we're crossing a real deep waterway, and then we go into a area which is mud flat, so there's two miles across this water, so probably about 60% of it is shallow mud. So if the tide isn't right, you're about knee deep in clam ridden mud.
across, and of course they're thrilled. It's it's two miles, so it takes a good time to get across, and you've been exposed to some pretty high, either sunshine, wind, rain, cold, whatever, you're exposed to something. There's no way you can cross that without coming on the other side and being thrilled to death to see the MASH unit, which is the Mad River Hospital, where some doctors and some nurses and some friends set up a tent and serve chicken soup and, and really are wonderful people. And it's just such a reward. This is a tough race, and it's designed to be tough. We want you to test your limits, and, and we want you to get cold. We want you to get muddy. We want you to experience this whole thing. So th this is one of those little relief stations that brings you back to your sober thinking. <laughs> She turned around and she says, oh, my friends are, are all on the other side. I've got to go back. And she turned and started to go back in the water. <laughs> oh, oh, and she Mom she grabbed her. And, and because you have hypothermia, you just don't think. Don't think. But I'd, yeah. I'd take a blanket and I'd go down and I'd patrol the beach because, you know, uh, we had uh, a couple little kids come in. Them and their grandpa and their mother was in a boat and dumped over in the bay. And they yeah. had to get rescued then. So uh, I said, well, the next time I go down, I'm going to make sure I have a blanket with me. So this time I had a blanket with me and I got her coming out of the water. And she said, my car's on the other side, my friend's waiting for me. And she, she was she out of it. Contact? She was out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't remember getting up here at all. So she just doesn't remember a bit. She was one of the uh, racers. So you've had some pretty exciting injuries here. Why do you all do this? For the, for the glory! glory! <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> It was real windy, real cold, real wet, but we made it. Took us two hours. Better than last time, though. We did it in three last time, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're happy with it. Well, we calculated it would take us three, so we beat our own calculations, so what the heck. Did you do this in or out of the water, these calculations? <laughs> <laughs> we did them out of the water. <laughs> Bob, how do you feel about it? I'm, I'm Phil. 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 I'm Bob. That's Phil. Hi, <laughs> I'm Phil. That's a good formal representation. <laughs> <laughs> I got it wrong in the newspaper, too. So. Are, are you slightly delirious now, too? 
Oh yeah, after two hours in the water, I think just about anybody would be delirious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which way's up anymore. It's okay. I know my legs are down, and I think they're staying down. <laughs> He's slightly delirious. I mean, I'm simply irresistible, so what can I say? <laughs> we what saw you guys going over the sand dunes, and you were giving it quite a valiant effort. Uh, mm. Did that go as you calculated also? Well, yeah. Actually, because the machine is as heavy as it is, it's... Uh, it's about 800 pounds. Uh, actually, we did. We, we really sucked it up. We did good, didn't we? Didn't we do good, Mike? We yeah, well. we did well. So uh, calculation-wise, I'd say that yeah, yeah, we pulled it off real fine. We're still acing after day two, so I mean, there's not much else you can ask for at this point. He's got mismatched shoes. <laughs> What's in your calculations for tomorrow? We just want to get through this thing. <laughs> And your name is? My name is Bob Morelli, Ace Pilot. And what's the name of your vehicle, Bob? This year it's called the Calculated Risk. It's actually a working calculator that's solar powered. We are actually in here to do a Guinness Book World Records of the largest man-powered man -powered moving solar powered calculating machine ever built. And that's actually a category in the, in the record? Absolutely not, but we're going to make a new one. <laughs> the strategy for this race is just to enjoy it, to sit back, and whenever we can, douse people with silly string. Silly. <laughs> Who am I talking to? You're Barry Thorpe. I'm Kim Thorpe, his wife. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do when you're not uh, in the race? Oh, we just kind of mope. <laughs> 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 No, I'm a painter. I, I'm a painter. You're a painter? Yeah. Um, I deliver mail up in Tr Trinidad, um, yeah, on the rural route. It's, it's a lot like kinetic racing. <laughs> well, I actually live in Fieldbrook, but Trinidad, what's 30 miles from... Yeah. It's, it's a local town. It's a local town? Yeah, it's, it's right around here. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I lived on Arcata Square when I first moved up here after high school and walked out of my house one day and there was all this stuff on the square, uh, these amazing machines, all these very, very happy and weird people. And I walked around with a stuck-on grin for about a week. <laughs> for about a week after that. Go on. Weird people. Go on. And, um, you know what I mean? Go on. Is there anything else? <laughs> I think we've been accepted. <laughs> well, they told us we could have this machine with no strings attached. <laughs> My pals. <laughs> it's extra heavy duty. Extra thick. Nothing but the stick, but you can't eat it. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we must be in the race now. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of things happen in this race that are fun, and one of them is the fact that we've had two weddings, actually. The first one, actually, we've had three weddings. One of them was in Time Magazine. That was when we just had the street race. But this uh, one wedding we had out there was really cute, and the, uh, Ormus was his name, and, and uh, I didn't marry him. Uh, Thorpe, uh, Kim Thorpe, married married them, and I, couldn't, I didn't have a license like I do now. But anyway... So uh, there we were out on the sand dunes in the middle of the night, and it was beautiful, and he came up, and they were going to get married. And she had made her wedding dress out of a curtain, which a lot of wedding dresses are made out of. But anyway, in this one, she left the curtain rod across the shoulders. <laughs> so it was, really, it was really funny. But you know, their wedding worked, and they're still married. So anyway, this year, it's 1991, we had another wedding. Now I had a license, so I could actually marry him. So I married the executive director from last year to a lady we call, this was Dave, to a lady we call Gravel Lady, who was our course coordinator. She runs out and puts the signs out and stuff like that. Big stout woman, beautiful people. Anyway, it was a wonderful wedding. We had the best time. A lot of people showed up, and it was very kinetic, and, and it was a very enjoyable event. We, and during the wedding, we had them march down. A, we set up a primitive, but almost a Armenian-type wedding or a spring festival-type wedding or something. Anyway, that was really a wonderful thing. And one of those things, and, and they've seemed very happy still. Here we are, two months after the race. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Thank you all for coming. You're all welcome here. And when we get to the legal part, I'll turn on the amplifier so you can hear. But at this point, I'd like to ask anybody, is this necessary in a wedding? If there's anyone here who doesn't want these two people to get married, would they please go home? <laughs> happening here is these two people have decided to get married so they're making a commitment to themselves and what happens this commitment that they're making this agreement is actually something that's going to be born right here this day this hour this minute and you are the witnesses to this turn the amplifier on okay <laughs> charles david jones charles david jones <laughs> <laughs> Will you take Nancy Ann Eason? Will you take Nancy Ann Eason? To be your wedded wife. To be your wedded wife. To love. To love. To cherish. To cherish. To continually bestow upon her. To continually bestow upon her. Your heart's deepest devotion. Your heart's deepest devotion. And Nancy. And Nancy. Will you take Alan, David? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nancy. Hey, Nancy, will you take David? To be your wedded husband. To be your wedded husband. To love. To, to love. To cherish. To cherish. To continually bestow upon him. To ten continually bestow upon him. <laughs> your, your heart's deepest devotion. Your heart's deepest devotion. More volume. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you're gonna have these rings. You know, you have to put out to me. These rings. These rings <laughs> represent represent a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> may, may these rings. May these rings be blessed as a symbol. Be blessed as a symbol of this affectionate unity. Of this affectionate unity. Inasmuch as David. Inasmuch as David. And Nancy. And Nancy. Have consented together in marriage. Have consented together in marriage. Before this company. Before this company. Have pledged their faith. Have pledged their faith. And declared their unity. And declared their unity. By each giving these rings. By each giving these rings. And are now joined in mutual esteem and devotion. And are now joined in mutual esteem and devotion. <laughs> and by the power. And by the power. Vested in me. Vested in me. As a minister. As a minister. Of the Universal Life Church. Of the Universal Life Church, 601 3rd Street, Modesto. <laughs> 601 3rd Street, Modesto? <laughs> I now pronounce you man I now and wife. pronounce you man and wife! That they will have their anniversary at the race from now on. At the race from now on. <laughs> the third day now, people are really veterans. They've been exposed to air and, and high winds, and their sun burned, and they're really they've now adjusted and they've changed their they've, their metabolism now has come to somebody who's conditioned to be outdoors. They start to show it. They all look a little healthier now, too, actually. actually. And the sculptures that were pretty when they left the square are not so pretty anymore. They're torn, and there's driftwood taped into broken pipes and wheels that have been welded, and uh, lots and lots of changes have taken place. <laughs> Yeah. 
How come Rob's dirtier than you are, though? I was in the front, we hit this puddle and went all over. You guys want to go back and race it again? You got so much energy. He's, he's our front fender. Combination pilot fender. Saves all the weight on the machine, right? So how did the machine go? Uh, no, did it do as well as you thought? Any problems? No, oh, I'm better. Never climbed Slimy Slope before. Went right up there. Went right up with no pulls or no pushes? No, no pulls, no, no pushes. pushes, nothing. Fantastic. Yeah, it surprised us. <laughs> you think you have a shot at the course record as far as time? It's right there. The course changes every year with the currents and the way the sand dunes are, so it's right in there. How was the river? What was your water time on the uh, Humboldt Bay yesterday? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. You looked real fast. That's not a record. You did it in uh, 24 or 25? Uh, actually, uh, Andrew Legend made my record. Okay, so you're real close to a record on the bay too. Two minutes off the first record. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for the Art of Speed, Egret 16, Rob Hitchcock and Allie Crow. Okay, well, let's take this moment Mike and my hand to thank our sponsors. I'd like to thank K&M Glass. They gave us some money. Yay! North Coast Cellular box our t-shirts. They're, they're a great choice. Golden Harvest fed us dinner last night, and it was really great. You should check it out sometime. KREDQ92, they were excellent sponsors, giving us lots of glory for everything. And my friend Rick, down at English Maker, he did the layout of what's going on in the front. Pandemonium breaks loose as the King's Navy. As they come into Ferndale now, this is a, this is another element actually. Uh, so far, the test is over. Now, if you've made it this far, you've made it. Some of them are barely hanging on. Like I've been on sculptures where we weren't sure the wheel would really make it the extra quarter of a mile into Ferndale. But nevertheless, uh, here you are. You're coming into town now, and there's a rush that you've actually succeeded. It's just a wonderful feeling, and the crowds here pick it up from you. I mean, your costumes are torn. Your machines are no longer pretty anymore. They have been tested, beat up, banged up, turned over, rolled, dented, rained on, snowed on, just about everything that can happen. And as you come into town, there's this great release, and you're very healthy about it, too, and the crowds cheer, and everybody's thrilled to death because vicariously they've all lived with you. And especially at this point, you realize that the race really wasn't a competition at all with other racers. The race was really just a competition for yourself. A ten-point check with this woman here is five-minute aura change. We're going to change her aura and do a ten-point check. So here we go. We're going to run down a series of common problems that most people have with their eternal souls, you understand? Okay, we're going to check for halo envy. Let's see here. Two, three. Yep. Okay. Okay, we got moderate halo envy. We got banal retentiveness. Let's check for banal retentiveness. Step back, turn around. That looks, that looks pretty, pretty severe. Oh my. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to check your spam mantra. Okay, say, say, ow. I, okay, now say, more. That's pretty good. I like that one there. Okay, we're going to check your Rajneesh. Wipe his blinky eyes. Okay, no red. Okay, she's not wearing any red. Wipers are working. All right. <laughs> okay. We're going to have to check your serenity stabilizer. Now, stand on one foot here. Now, I'm going to say abusive things to you. If you fall down, we're going to have to replace your, your serenity stabilizer. You ready? Yeah. You're, you're ugly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Looks like I need work myself, man. <laughs> okay, okay, we're gonna have to recalibrate your serenity stabilizer, I think. Vibe emissions, well, that seems pretty obvious. We're gonna have to fail you on that one there. Okay, okay, we're gonna have to uh, check and lube your unity joint, but we can't do that on television. Uh, we, can, we can alternate your ego here. We put this on the back. There we go, and this way. Okay, and one of these here. Oh my God, and put this on like that. Uh, that looks pretty silly, I like that. Okay, well, maybe not alternate it, maybe just ruin it, I'm not sure. Okay, and flush and fill bodily fluids, we definitely can't do on television. Uh, <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'm At the Karma Clinic, we also offer a series of optional services. Oh, we can give you a Gestalt station upgrade. We can winterize your soul. We can do perception tinting. We offer the rose-colored or the clouded. We also do stereotype tinting. And our, we have a ver many various payment methods. You can pay through the nose. You can pay in patchouli oil. You can pay in limbs, arms, or legs. Or you can pay in limbo, lifetimes, or numbers of years. And sometimes, if you have very severe problems, you might have to leave group therapy for a series of months or years. But we can't help that, can we now? You knew that you could do it, or you thought you could do it, and now you know you can do it, and you've done more than you've done and I don't know when, and you found out that your body can take a lot more than you thought. You also found a whole lot about, found out a whole lot about parent messages. It's okay to be muddy, it's okay to be dirty, it's okay to have fun. <laughs> anyway, they come in, there's a grandstand and a master of ceremonies. Bill Neal is his master of, reason he's master of ceremonies because he went out and had to try and make a sign that says master of ceremonies. <laughs> That's all it takes to qualify in our race. He's been a great master of ceremonies ever since. But anyway, so he gets up and then the great Razuli helps and, and the radio stations are here and it's being broadcasted and a lot of action, a lot of people talking and laughing and joking and then Navy comes out with their, uh, with their color guard and march, march with the people and that sort of thing. So it's just a wonderful community straight and the race is over and, and uh, everybody has made it and you ask a billion questions when you come into town. Where's this machine? Where's that machine? Did so-and-so make it? Did her finger really have to be set? You know, <laughs> was her ankle broken or just sprained? <laughs> you know, a lot of these little things happen. Then we, then we gather together, and at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, whatever, kinetic time, uh, we have a dinner at the Portuguese Hall, and at that time we have the awards. And, and our awards, uh, uh, there's quite a few awards, but we're not like the regular thing, the race award. We, first of all, we don't have them. We want to have money for our awards, and someday we will. But right now we just give it what we can. I'm an artist and I do sculptures. So I'll do a very tall, very valuable sculpture and give it for best overall in the spirit of the race. And we have the art Where are you going next? Disneyland! Hey. <laughs> that's another award that nobody really knows about. We have the lowest award known to man, which is called the Worst Honorable Mansion. And uh, this, of course, is an award that doesn't even reach worst. This is really bad. And we always find somebody in the race who, and thrilled to death to get it, too. It's really amazing. And we also have the Mediocre Award, and we have Second to Last Award. That's it. That was the whole video. I know, I know, there are some parts missing, but you notice at the front it said a home video semi-documentary, so it doesn't cover everything. If you do have questions, I would suggest that you get this book, The Kinetic Sculpture Race, The Glorious Founder, Hobart Brown, Tells All. For more information on how you can get this book, Write to the address that will soon be appearing on the screen. And that's all there is. Thank you for watching, and see you at next year's race. Cut, cut, that's a wrap. It's a take.